Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Bonsai Academy. My name is Jan Ikea of Yama Bonsai Studio and today we're going to talk about Larches or Larix. Uh, this is a species that's quite underrated. They make very big trunks quite fast and they're very nice projects to, to handle or to take care about. Today we're going to work on this Larix decidua and this Larix decidua is a native species that you can find in Belgium, everywhere in Europe almost like the south of France, Austria, you name it. Uh, they have very quality bark, very nice bark, very nice movement. Um, they grow with very nice branches that, that are hanging quite low and the tips grow up to the sun. So they're also very easy to take care of and heavy pruning is the best to do like November, December and winter time and that's now. So that's why this is a nice project to work on and to show you guys what we need to do with this tree. I got this tree from a customer or I bought it from a customer and as you can see it's a quite a nice tree. This is actually a Yamadori from Austria and that was already been worked on and already for a couple of years a bonsai. But some issues we're done with it and I'm not satisfied with how the tree looks now. So I've let it grow and winter time is ideal to cut. So we have a few ideas with this tree. As you can see it has a very nice nice trunk line over here, very old bark. Here the bark is going uh, off a little bit so it will create some dead wood over here. Here as well. This is a nice cascading branch that's, that's growing down. Then you have some nice branches over here and then you have here a very big open space so that's quite a shame and we don't have really a lot of back branches as you can see here so for my idea there are a few possibilities okay and the first possibility is to compress this part a lot so that our apex will be a little bit shorter and we can bring this one down to create here. And then you have in a short time a nice looking bonsai. But is that the right thing to do with this tree? In my opinion not really because what if we could spend 10 or 15 years on this tree and we can make this tree more compact, maybe more elegant or maybe more compact and more strong. So there are several possibilities but the best possibility is that we can work on a future ray onto this tree, yeah? So, my plan is to make dead wood out of this one and create a tangent. This also happens in nature as well. So young trees grow quite pointy and older trees they grow with quite a flat top. Uh, above the tree line there are also some lark species that do exist or some larks that exist because they're quite easy to grow. Uh, so, as I told you, with this one we're going to make a tangent uh, because with older trees uh, that live above the tree line mostly the top die off and the, the uh, older branches that are growing down are starting to, to live or they survive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these branches off. So winter time is perfect to cut these trees back to do a heavy pruning because then you can see the branch structure and everything so that's quite important as well. What I'm doing now is cutting these all off and going to make a nice tension out of it. So if you can see we have a very beautiful line here and this could be a possible new apex for the design but as I told you there are several other options as well. So I'm first going to make this dead wood and then I'm going to decide what we're going to do. So when I'm making dead wood I use my, my concave cutters to get the bark off. So if you can see this is the cambium layer and we have to scrape it off until the hardwood. That's very important. Cambium is quite soft and it will turn a little bit brown when you haven't removed everything. So, this is also the part that gives water and nutrients to the foliage of the tree.
larks also have very hard wood and that's because they also have a lot of resin in it so they stay if you have like yamadori with old wood and the grains are grown very tight against each other uh, the wood stays quite long very hard and they can weather a lot of conditions by a lot of conditions so that's what that's why they also use it for carpenter and stuff like that so what I use now are these carving tools uh, that I got they're quite easy and quite lovely to use they're handmade and you have them in different sizes and they're very lovely and sharp so be careful with your fingers so while I'm tearing the bark off you see that here's a part where they remove the big branch or a piece of the trunk which could have been quite nice if it was still on it and maybe it would fill in this this gap but it isn't so it's not a problem here you can see because they removed it that here is a complete line that's quite dead do you see the difference between here where there was the living the living part and between here the dead part so we need to scrape this part off as well and when we're finished with this piece uh, because i want to create like a very old canarily large that's very contorted by, by nature. Um, while we're getting this off, then we see the lines of the wood very well, and then we can decide what we're going to do. And this, here you can see that they use the machine or use the knob cutter to try to make it more the shape of the trunk. Uh, this looks very unnatural. So with, um, with, uh, with some carving tools, but manually carving tools, we need to go into the wood and try to hollow it out or make something more beautiful with lines or something, okay? Here you can see that it all is all dried up and difficult to remove. Also very important if you have places where it's still alive, we're going to remove and here is the line that we need to create taper because because we, this was almost the same size until here. And it's important with this tree to create movement or with only this one or with this one, see? And by doing that, we also create taper, what's very important. And it's very important to cut very sharp with a, with a very sharp knife into this living part so that the cambium can heal and will grow over in this part a little bit, okay? So I have a few ideas what could be a possibility. This line is quite straight and we could bend this part to here to create a new apex, but this is quite long as well. It's possible because larches are quite flexible, uh, but I want to do something in the long run, like 10, 15 years to create a nice decent tree and to make it very compact. So we have the possibility to cut this one here and so because here the bark is coming off and is already making some dead wood here is some dead wood as well so we could remove this part and create a small gene as well so if you can see you can see a nice trunk movement a very nice uh, cascading branch over here and we can go for maybe like this one to create more elegance or we can go for a very compact short trunk 
to create more movement, more taper into here, create an apex out of this one, first branch here, back branch and that. So in my opinion, I think I would rather go and work with only this one and remove these as well to create a very dramatic, very uh, strong, powerful tree. Because they are apical dominant and these, this tree will uh, need to grow a lot because you need to grow, let, them, let these grow out. It is possible to get this bigger as well so it, this would look like a very beautiful movement and here we can create like a shari in, in future, okay? So this will be the thing that we will be doing. Um, I'm going to show some, uh, some bending tricks as well probably with this dead wood so that this piece of dead wood will run into the tree a little bit, okay? So we have cut these branches off. I'm now going to complete that one on it. We also need to change the position a little bit to see this part of the new trunk as well. So we're going to lift it a little bit more to the front. Like this. So you can see this movement, but it goes a little bit too much to that side. So we also will be lifting it a bit to this side as well, so that we can create balance, okay? So, as you can see, uh, we made jeans out of these ones as well. Why? Because I want to have a very compact, beautiful, strong tree. Here was already some piece dead, so I connected this part to here. And here are some beautiful lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to hollow this out a little bit more because here they made something not that beautiful. And here are some beautiful lines. So with a chisel and a hammer, I'm going to press into the wood and there's everybody thinks that we need to use a chisel like this yes but what do what you do then is you go you you cut the lines in the wrong direction well if you hold your chisel like that and this side that's like that um, follows the line of the wood itself yeah so, so the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this structure and that means that I'm first setting up the bones and it means that first I will be wiring this part and this part together. Why? Because this will be our first branch or one, two branches. So first first plug, second and this will be the rest of our trunk as you can see. So here we need to make some sort of an apex out of it so it means that I need to bend this part more to this side, okay? So that's what we'll, we will try to do at the moment. So I'm first going to measure it. Now first we need to make our anchor point, so that means that I first need to try to bend it into this direction until my wire is steady. Now that part is steady and I try to wire 45 degrees or a little bit more. Then this one, we need to wire the other way. If we wire the other one clockwise, we need to wire the other one counterclockwise. like this and try not to make any openings
So we're finished with the styling of this beautiful large. Uh, as you can see, we made a total different tree out of this one. Uh, pretty dynamic with a more beautiful movement. Uh, in future, this crown needs to grow out a little bit more. So this we will let it grow. So because of that, because our apex is going to become a little bit bigger, this part of the now trunk will get bigger as well. There's one thing that, in my opinion, doesn't fit really well with the tree, and that are these, these gins or that wood. So we will solve this problem by cracking these off to create a more normal and more beautiful tree. They look a little bit unnatural and I'm not really happy and they look too big a little bit. So we're going to remove them to make the tree more compact as well. This already looks a little bit better. <coughs> Maybe I can remove this one here. So the tree looks more dramatical. And contort it. So this already will look, looks a little bit better. Uh, in future we can improve it a little bit more because this is quite heavy. So maybe what the possibility is, is maybe I'm going to remove it and hollow it completely out. And maybe I will hollow this here also a little bit out so that we have like more taper into the trunk as well, because this part is still quite big and I'm not, not Still not really happy with it, so maybe I can try to do it now already. It's also important to create taper and dead wood and now it lacks it a little bit so It's still quite big over here, so I'm going to try to reduce a little bit there as well and create more taper in here. It's still a little bit big in my opinion. So for today we're finished. As you can see, we have made a very dramatical tree uh, by only using this first branch. This needs to develop a, a, a little bit more. This part is we're going to let grow out a little bit more because the apex is going to high, uh, grow a little bit higher. Uh, so we will let it grow. And here we can already cut a little bit back uh, when the time is right of or pinched in spring. Yes, so that we can create more ramification. Uh, by letting this grow, because they are apical dominant, 
uh, this branch will also get or this trunk line will also get get bigger what's quite important because now it's still a little bit small also in future probably uh, we want to remove this gin here so that we more uh, have a more beautiful line over here this one we have bent down so that we can create the flow to there what's quite important and maybe in future we will hollow this out a little bit and open it up here so that we can see right and through it a little bit so that we will create more depth then in future when the butt's starting to pop a little bit not when they are open but when they are uh, will swell a little bit then it's right time to repot this tree and a large is also uh, a little bit difficult after a repotting re session because then they tend to grow a little bit slower because it's quite uh, drastic for them so because this looks like a tree that lives a little bit above uh, the tree line uh, i have the idea of having a rock kind of rock composition or a slab where the tree is growing on maybe with some accent plants or something so that's something we will show next time and then in future the tree can grow a little bit more and create more ramification what will be beautiful as well so maybe for next time as well when we remove this or make this a little bit smaller and hollow it down we will also uh, sandblast it and you will see the development of this tree this is a tree i will probably keep for a little while so you people can see the difference from beginning to start okay